last year I decided, you know, I want to start my own podcast. And what am I really passionate about? Well, fishing is what I'm really fishing passionate outdoor. about. Yeah. And so I decided there weren't really any podcasts out there just focused on women fishing. Uh-huh. And so I, you know, decided that's what I was going to do. And it's been great ever since. Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing and the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your fearless host, Angie Scott. Welcome to this week's episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. This week, I'm doing something a bit different. It's always fun being featured on other people's podcasts. And last summer, I had the honor of being on a show called Wildcast. Wildcast is not only a podcast, it's also a TV show. And uh, it's aired locally here in Tennessee. It's hosted by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, a.k.a. the TWRA, and it was so much fun to be on. Jason Harmon and Don King were the hosts of that episode, and we, we actually filmed it on my quest pontoon right at the on the lake. And uh, they actually gave me permission to share it with you all on the Woman Angler and Adventure podcast. So that's what we're going to do this week. Uh, you can also go to the website and you would be able to see the video version that aired on TV as well. I uh, hope you enjoy. Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. Hey, I'm excited about our show today. We are on location, and if you're listening, you're going to have to go back and watch this show. We are uh, in a pontoon boat at Four Corners Marina, so uh, this is pretty cool. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching, Uh, but we are on Angie Scott's boat. She is uh, an angler. Uh, She works in the music business. We're going to learn all about her today, but she also hosts a podcast called the Women Angler and Adventurer Podcast, so we're going to explore that today today and uh i've got mr don king with me hey as well great to be here this is this is the coolest location we have done <laughs> up to now it's I tell you what definitely up there somewhere yeah you know, we've been on houseboats we've been on now pontoon boat yeah uh, defoe's garage Defoe's, you know yep sure <laughs> so, enough so that was that was pretty cool but now we're on angie's boat uh a quest. Yeah. Tell us about the boat. How did you come across this? Yeah, so this is a quest pontoon. I got it from Anderson Marine in Old Hickory. Quest is located up in Michigan, St. Louis, Michigan, and uh, they they're a pretty cool company. I I bought a Quest years ago. Uh, it's a much smaller one than this one, and fell in love with it. Fell in love with the the guys that work there, mm-hmm. and uh, started this podcast. And we kind of worked out a thing where they um, let me use this boat for a few months, cool. kind of show it off. And uh, it's a pretty cool boat to show off. Do you so. do all your shows from the boat? No, I, I, but we need to do more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I just got that. it. I mean, it's brand new. I just picked it up Saturday, so yeah, you guys so- are among the first that's really neat when you can meet the people that actually you know make your instrument or make your boat you know that 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 just adds a special it does and especially when they're like you know when i was designing my first boat uh one of the things i mentioned to them is eventually i'd like to start guiding which now i have my captain's license Uh awesome that was quite a process but they were able to customize it to where yeah, I mentioned that there's a possibility I may take out somebody who's in a wheelchair. So they put in a wheelchair oh, gate neat. yeah, and then kind of rearrange the furniture so the seat would be removable. Uh-huh. And so, and I still have that boat. So I, you awesome. know, can still use that one if that situation came up. But this one uh, doesn't have a wide enough gate, but uh, still a very nice boat. That's cool. Yeah. And while we're talking about the boat, let's jump. I'm going to jump points here, but so you have this boat because you fish in a uh, uh, tournament. I f- yeah, series. I fish in a, a club, local club here in Nashville called Team Nashville Bassmasters. I joined it last year. I didn't, I was a little scared, you know, first. I'm, I'm 
honestly, I'm new to bass fishing because I grew up in Minnesota and I grew up fishing walleye. Like that's kind of my main wow. thing, but I'm out here on Percy Priest all the time and there's no walleye in Percy Priest. <laughs> but did you know the record walleye is caught yeah, in Tennessee? Yeah, yeah the old hickory. Yeah. 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 So that, that's super cool. Mm-hmm. And I have fish walleye here in the area. I've gone down to Normandy quite a bit fish walleye down there there's a guide i'll give him a quick shout out pete sure. hatchet who kind of took me out and got me my first tennessee walleye Neat. a few years right. ago That's so awesome. yeah but uh so yeah bass fishing is something i'm still really learning and what's cool about team nashville bass masters is it's a team deal where you, you're at you have a boater and a co-angler and you get drawn so i get to fish with different guys every tournament oh neat and they you know i learned something new from everyone i get paired up with so it's been and, and they've been great i'm the only female in the club i was gonna say i heard you say guys and i was yeah. gonna ask you if there were I any would, other ones i would there. love to see that changed um if Definitely. any women out there are watching or listening to the show check out team nashville bass masters yeah. we need some more women in the club uh-huh. um and and just real quick i also just started a facebook group called women anglers of tennessee to just kind of try to get more connected sure. to other women in the area who fish so that would be really cool if if you want to jump on that and we'll kind of maybe get out and fish together or whatever would yeah. be fun but you have to share that with us we'll share it yeah with folks. okay yeah cool. that's awesome so do uh you don't get made fun of hopefully using a pontoon to fish out here on in the Bassmaster team or the not, uh, the uh, Nashville Bassmaster Yeah, Masters. not not so far. <laughs> um and I think when they see this with a 250, yeah, you know, probably it's probably keep up. <laughs> uh, I think they're going to be impressed with how comfortable it is to fish from a pontoon and I I don't know why more tournament anglers don't go that route. Yeah. I mean, I know pontoons kind of have a stigma you know being slow and it's just not the case anymore Uh i mean this is a triple tune and it just rides really nice and it i think it can handle it pretty well so i'm excited to try that out here soon yeah that's neat i guess it's got a live well is this the live well behind us yep there's a live well back there there's actually one under where don's sitting as well so it's got two live wells cool Yep, and uh, there's like a cutting board in here, and you know, you, know, you can just do whatever you want out yeah. here. <laughs> Grill out. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, hey, so, before we leave the Minnesota sure. thing, yeah. yeah, tell us about the land of 10,000 lakes. I mean, you, you, did you ever do any ice fishing? Uh, uh, very little yeah. when I was If I, I lived was there, I think up. I would do very little ice fishing. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first experience ice fishing, my dad took us out and I was... I don't know, maybe five or six or something like that. Uh And it was the old school sit on a bucket out in the middle of the lake. Shut up and fish. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, and nowadays it's much different than that. I mean, so I had the the, uh, opportunity to fish, uh, ice fish on Lake Superior just this past January. Oh, neat. And uh, we had these really nice insulated... uh, pop-up ice houses with heaters and oh, wow. it was it, yeah it was a nice experience That's good. and the water was so clear you could see right down to the bottom oh, it's almost like watching an aquarium you know <laughs> wow. pretty cool experience so you know if i lived up there now i'd probably do more ice fishing i also got to ice fish on lake malax up in minnesota here not too long ago so yeah well, tell us how you how you came to Tennessee. We we kind of skimmed over that earlier, but you it's your work in the music business, but you yeah. came to Nashville. Yeah, so I was going to the University of Minnesota, and I just I always wanted to work in the music industry for whatever reason. I just you know I loved music and thought that would just be really cool. So I kind of had a plan to study business at the University of Minnesota, and then maybe somehow get my foot in the door. Uh-huh. And, uh, counting for a record label or something i didn't uh-huh. really know what all was out there and uh i stumbled upon uh it was actually the oakridge boys manager was on the nashville network talking about the school in oklahoma city where he has a music business program and i didn't know such things existed uh-huh. at the time so that's when i started doing some research and i found belmont and mtsu and I was like, that's where go I need Blue to Rider. go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. what I need to be doing. So I worked on transferring down and um, 
it all worked out. I moved down to Murfreesboro and went to MTSU. I, I still had three years to put in there. Um, unfortunately, the University of Minnesota was one of the last schools still on semester or trimesters. Mm. And so my credits transferred over really weird uh. and kind of had to go a little bit longer. But then... Uh-huh. Went there, loved it. I get, I got a 4.0 because I, I just couldn't believe I was getting graded on things like the history of rock and roll and music wow. publishing. And <laughs> That's the class I had to take twice. <laughs> I was like watching rock and roll Jeopardy on VH1 and I'm studying right now. Right, you know? right. So that's cool. I did a bunch of internships and kind of right after I graduated, lucked out and got a job at one of the major booking agencies in town. And I was there for 16 years. Wow. So just got back into fishing and got my boat five years ago. I was like, you know, I'm here. There's these great lakes in the area. I'm not taking advantage of this. I need to be because I love fishing so much. The only time I'd really get to fish is if I had an opportunity to go back up to Minnesota, like for a week over Uh the summers and we'd go to the lake up there. And so it's just been great ever since. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think uh, Nashville, It'll do that to a lot of people. Everybody comes to Nashville or comes to Tennessee because of music. Mm-hmm. You know, I ended up in Middle Tennessee because of music. Don's here because of music from Nebraska. Yeah. So it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a melting pot, I guess it you is. could say. Yeah, yep. it really is. And the, the neat thing is the, the internships you mentioned, you mm-hmm. know, that's where Nashville really has it. Or the, the schools located close to Nashville have mm-hmm. a, you know, MTSU and Belmont. I mean, gosh, so much talent comes out of those schools that, mm-hmm. that the industry just kind of welcomes them in and you know grooms them and yeah. so that's great you were able to yeah it's a very take advantage it's a very way. competitive it is industry so i feel very mm, lucky yeah. that everything kind of worked out and sure ended up and and so now i work for a business management company um on music row which is uh-huh. cool uh, the booking agency i was at was downtown i always wanted to be on music row so it's kind of cool to you made it yeah <laughs> yep so that's been awesome. a lot of fun yeah that's cool so yeah. real quick that and that kind of led being in the music business made it a easier easy transition for the podcast kind of thing yeah i had i had some background i did some songwriting through over the years you mm-hmm. know i think a lot of people do oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh and so i would kind of produce my own demos on garage band and mm-hmm. stuff and so and it, a guy, a friend of mine approached me. He wanted to start a songwriting podcast years ago and asked he needed a co-host. And so I said, sure, I've never done yeah. anything like that before, but I'll give it a shot. So uh-huh. we did that for a while. And that kind of introduced me to the whole podcasting thing. And uh, last year I decided, you know, I want to start my own podcast. And what am I really passionate about? Well, fishing is what I'm really fishing passionate outdoors. about. And so I decided there weren't really any podcasts out there just focused on women fishing. Uh And so I, you know, decided that's what I was going to do. And it's been great ever since. It's amazing how much has happened in the last year through that podcast. Yeah. Well, tell us about your shirt. Folks listening, you'll have to to, to describe it to them. But I'm the captain of my own own ship. ship. Yeah. So... One of the great things that's happened is uh, I, I had a, a lady on the podcast uh, from the Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation. Okay. And uh, they, a lot of listeners might be familiar with TakeMeFishing.org. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, she was talking about this campaign they started last year called Women Making Waves, which is really to try and get more women in the fishing and boating world um there's some kind of staggering statistics that they've gathered uh, one of them is 17.7 million women participated in fishing which is a record number which is great awesome. it's growing yeah. uh 43% of new anglers are women but there's some problems like only 19% of them see themselves represented in the sport of fishing uh-huh. so and that makes retention difficult you know when you're not seeing that you're being represented. And right. so they started this campaign to try to get more women sharing on social media and, and showing kind of a, at a grassroots level and uh-huh. showing that more women out there are fishing and kind of 
one of the slogans we have on our show is if she can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. When you see other women out there doing it, then you think, oh, you know, she's doing that. I can, I can get involved with that. So that's, uh, you know, we kind of started working together with them and, uh, they invited us down to ICAST in Orlando, which just happened recently. And they Mm -hmm. had a big women's meetup one afternoon at ICAST where they invited a lot of the influencers, um, on social media, YouTube, Instagram, uh, other just women in the industry Uh to get together. They did a presentation, um, about this new campaign that they've started. If you go to takemefishing.org, you can click on a link, sign up for their uh, social media campaign, Uh start sharing stuff, tagging women making waves, hashtag and hashtag get your fish on. Okay. And you can earn points and win cool shirts like this. (laughs) All right. They have, yeah, they have other slogans and different, you know, colors and and types of shirts you can wear or, or, win and yeah. some other stuff so That's it's kind cool. of kind of a cool idea and uh hopefully it really catches on and starts making an impact and iCast is the place to go isn't it for the fishing industry oh yeah you know, it's it was amazing jason and i i don't think you've ever attended no, have you and I'd i like haven't to, either we it usually falls about the same time of year as another conference that we attend for work but i've heard so many great things about that that conference in uh some people kind of equate it to the fishing version of the shot show, which, you know, happens in mm-hmm. Las, Las mm-hmm. Vegas. And, but. Yeah, like, you know, I've been to the Tennessee Fishing Expo. Right. Kind of take that and multiply it many, <laughs> many, many times over, and you got ICAST. I mean, it's just amazing how many different companies are represented there and products. And we saw some pretty cool products, too. There's there's some pretty cool innovations coming out in the fishing world. One of the coolest ones, if, if I can mention sure, it yeah. real quick, this uh, company from Australia has come up with this camera that's dual-facing and you attach it on your line and it floats. So you're fishing, you can trigger it to start recording when you catch something and it will record you reeling in the fish from both the perspective of, you know, you and the, you can see the fish on the line and then back up at the boat wow. as you're reeling it in. And uh, it floats. So if you, you don't get snagged or something, bust right. your line, like you can retrieve the camera. I you think we're going to build one of those into our budget. For the- <laughs> yeah. I think so. It sounds like a 360 yeah. kind of deal. And it, yeah. You know, that's cool that it attaches oh, to your line. He's, they've that only got neat. the patent on it yet. They don't have any units actually available, but he's. I think he said they'll have some test units ready by the end of the year. So I think you need one of those. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I want to try it out for sure. Yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, that's, that's a cool thing about iCast. You kind of get to see some some of these innovative products yeah, that's uh, neat. first and yeah it was fun from billion dollar ad budgets and arena naming rights to tens of thousands of retail locations big wireless providers spend big to appear like they're your only option how do they afford it all <laughs> that big bill you get at the end of every month mint mobile had a different idea instead of brick and mortar overhead mint mobile is online only what does that mean for you A whole lot of savings because wireless plans from Mint Mobile start at just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just $15 a month. You'll save enough that you can get a brand new rod and reel for the upcoming season. For anyone who just hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan, and you can even keep your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. By going online only and eliminating traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash waypoint. That's mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash waypoint.
I wanted to jump back on this, the women anglers and, and women in mm-hmm. the outdoors. I, I see a lot on social media. I think it's growing. I think that number is growing. I, I could see how that, that 17.7 million, you know, participate. That's a record number. That's great. And I, I see a lot of women on, on Instagram, mm-hmm. you know, holding fish and, mm-hmm. and hunting and planting food plots and out there with the guys yeah. doing, doing all this stuff. So yep. and, yeah, hunting's another huge thing where we're seeing a lot of growth and we have a lot of female hunters on our podcast as well. That's why we kind of added the and adventure yeah. part of it. So sure. we can include uh, Melissa Bachman. We just did an interview with her. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but she's pretty phenomenal hmm. um we did it actually on bow fishing which is okay. kind of combining the two sports i yeah, guess uh-huh. you know yeah but uh yeah it's it's growing um you know still at icast I, there still wasn't a ton of female representation so we still have a really long way to go just mm-hmm products you know some companies are coming around and starting to think about more about women like columbia was one um mm-hmm. they're kind of trying to balance out their line of uh, available you know fishing shirts and things like that to kind of have just as many options for women as they have for men so right. it's cool that companies are starting to think about this yeah um but we still have a long way to go mm-hmm. so hopefully we'll just keep supporting rbff which yeah. you mentioned is rbff R- yeah rbff <laughs> is our, our BFF. BFF. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so i want to make sure we get that shout out yeah. take me fishing.org check out that website uh and yeah check out rbff's all the stuff they're doing they're they're uh they're retaining and recruiting and reactivating hunters yeah, and anglers the, trying to do their best to the three r's yeah that's I think all states are trying to implement yep. the three R's. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, more women are buying licenses than ever, but they're not necessarily renewing them. And so that, you yeah. know, we want to get to that point where. Yeah. The, Maybe to hook them up with that auto renew. Yeah, think? there you <laughs> go. Yeah. If you go to gooutdoorstennessee.com, you can auto renew your license here in Tennessee. Hey, Angie, I got to ask you about, about something I saw. Um, about you getting to go out with mm. the G-Man. Yeah. Gerald Swindle on mm. practice day at the Bassmaster Classic. Tell yep. us about that. That was kind of a serendipitous thing that happened right in between my transition from the booking agency to the business management world. I was able to take a little bit of time off. Oh, And one of nice. the things that was going on during that time was the Bassmaster Classic in Knoxville. <laughs> And so I was like, I'm going to take advantage of this and go out there for that. So I signed up through my podcast with a, for a media credential. And one of the things you can, can do, uh, is, uh, put in to do ride alongs with some of the anglers. Uh-huh. And it just so happens G-Man is like my favorite. I mean, he's hilarious, <laughs> you know? And so I just luck of the draw. I got picked oh, to man. ride along with G-Man on practice day, which was Wednesday. And that was an amazing experience. He's obviously, you know, you guys know he's hilarious. Yeah. He's also a huge music fan, mm. which I, I didn't realize, you know, but he started referencing stuff that I haven't even heard of. And we pretty much just talked about music oh, the whole neat. day. Yeah. Neat. That's cool. So it, it was super fun. I learned a little bit about fish. I was trying to, you know, watch what he was doing and pick up a few tricks here and there. But, uh, you know, I was just mostly just taking in the whole experience. <laughs> so that and was really, really cool. He didn't neat. forget you, did he? You said, no, you yeah. saw him again. He's like, come on over. Yeah. So I ran into him. I saw him at ICAST and I thought, oh, it'd be so cool to go up and talk to him and see uh-huh. if he remembers me. And I just happened to be walking by. I was actually going to the art BFF booth to get set up for that event. And he, he saw me and he's like, Hey girl, come over here. And so I went over and we started, he re- was introducing me and he's like, yeah, she was my marshal for the classic. And so I was like, okay, cool. You remembered me. Yeah. yeah so awesome. we might, we might have him out here on Percy Priest sometime and just hang out on the pontoon and pass the guitar around. That's good. Yeah. yeah. He might even, he might play. I don't know. I've, I haven't asked him that, but he participated in a... I think he a, does a little bit. I th- I think oh, okay. T- yeah. That's good. Yeah. Good to know. Yep. Yeah. He was in one of the music videos we did a few years ago with Daryl Worley. In, uh, oh, cool. Uh, so anyway, it was it was fun, and he, he was, as you said, he was just hilarious. Uh-huh. He's a hoot. So yeah. His videos on Facebook crack if, me up. You if can't you guys don't him. follow him on like Instagram and Facebook, it's worth following yeah. Yeah. just to watch his... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 
Well, let's jump from priest to old hickory. You got to fish in a, in a, a legends tournament. Yeah. And, uh, you said you came up on Bill Dance and he was trying to steal your spot. Is that Yep. <laughs> yep. Bill Dance was trying to steal our spot. And so TJ Martell Foundation, which is a really great, like cancer, uh, research foundation. Uh-huh puts on this event this was the third annual one that took place this year and they used to do a golf tournament so i think it's really cool that they decided to start doing fishing tournaments Mm, as a a big fundraiser chris young a country music artist murfreesboro boy was uh one of the the title sponsors of it and um they teamed up with the three legends, which is Bill Dance, Roland Martin, and Jimmy Houston. Mm-hmm. And uh, so those guys all fish in the tournament. And you can actually sign up for auction item to go out and fish with one of those guys, oh, which wow. what a, you know, chance of a lifetime. So it's Definitely. it's a great event. Um, so I fished it as a boater this year from my little quest pontoon and yeah we got a few looks pulling up to the ramp in a pontoon like some people were like are they gonna fish you know and yeah we did and i only have a 25 horse motor on that but we got around and i found a friend of mine kind of gave me a tip on this one spot this little like hump area out there not too far from the ramp because i was like i'm gonna need some close areas since i'm not gonna be able to go super fast but Uh um we were out there fishing and lo and behold up pulls up bill dance not too far from us and i was like okay well (laughs) i feel pretty confident about where we're fishing right now (laughs) so that yeah that was a pretty cool experience and uh i actually ran into roland martin's wife uh judy down at icast and she's a firecracker she grew up fishing um they've been married like 18 years now but she grew up and she's fished tournaments her whole life so i'm gonna try to get her on our podcast sometime oh, yeah, talk yeah. to her yeah, yeah she was all about it so That's that'll cool. be fun yep That's cool. Well, let's go on down the list here. You you got you you mentioned earlier you got your captain's license. Yep. So that's cool. That was uh that was quite a a process. If anyone wants to try to get your captain's license, just be aware there's a lot of requirements you have to meet, but it's not impossible. I did it. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, no, I think it's important for everybody to have some kind of boat boating education you know we're out here on percy priest it gets really busy Mm -hmm. i think it's super important to just have a really good understanding of nothing else the rules of the road right know who has the right of way obviously if you get your captain's license you go really in depth into all that stuff Uh but like a you know a good boating safety course i think you guys Mm -hmm. offer oh yeah yep those um i highly recommend but uh yeah getting my captain's license was was quite a challenge but it was fun and uh it was kind of funny my my test was out in Chattanooga. There were mm-hmm. a couple of locations you could pick and it was either like Memphis or Chattanooga and I chose Chattanooga and uh I wa- it was at the Bass Pro Shop out there and I walked in to the testing room and there was a guy in there and we were kind of talking and then after a minute we realized we knew each other. Huh. It was it was just the two of us testing that day and he's a a guide out on Mountain Hill mm-hmm. and he guides for musky and I've never caught a musky. It's like one of my bucket list <laughs> fish. That'd be awesome. So yeah. I took him out uh one day and or he took me out I should say and he had just caught the state record like oh, a yeah. few weeks before. Oh man. And his name's Stephen Paul and mm-hmm. uh we had a few follows that day we didn't get any. You know, it's a fish of 10,000 casts so I mm-hmm. guess I I got to go out a couple more times <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> before I yeah. get my musky. But uh, yeah, so that was kind That's of fun. funny, small world yeah. kind of thing. So, well, let's uh, before we run out of time, let's give um, uh, Four Corners a shout out, and then I want to hear about how to, how people can find your podcast. So, tell us about yeah. where we're sitting here at Four Corners. You said the hurricane, or not hurricane, the tornado come through here. Yeah, this this dock that we're uh, docked at the end of uh, was actually hit by a tornado. March 1st, 2017, it was quite a crazy experience. I mean, really did a lot of destruction. Um, I happened to be on a houseboat that morning, didn't realize oh, wow. the weather wow. was going to be that bad. That's scary. Yeah. yeah. So that was crazy. Well, yep. so thanks to Four Corners. Thank, yeah. thank them for letting us come out here and, and use the 
the end of the Doc K here. So, uh, but then also tell us how we can find the woman or the woman Ang- angler adventure podcast. Yep, you can go to the womanangler.com. All our episodes are available there. We're on Apple po- Podcasts, all the major podcast platforms. So definitely, we'd appreciate go check it out, subscribe, and. Uh, and join that Facebook group I mentioned too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to search that, and like I said, just we'll share that with folks. And okay. They can, they can find that easily, hopefully. Great. So, well, thank yeah. you guys for coming out yeah, today. Yeah, you bet. It's fun. This thank, has been great. Yeah. This thank you. Great. great to meet you. Yeah. Nice meeting you guys too. Yeah. Well, uh, that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, like I said, thank uh, Angie for being on with us, and make sure you check out the Woman Angler Adventure podcast. And then uh, check out this show, uh, tmwildlife.org, for all the uh, latest information on Tennessee Outdoor News. And uh, uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.